One reason accounting for the land sector is treated separately is because the sector can have significant fluxes of emissions and removals with origins that are either anthropogenic, man-made, such as deforestation, as well as non-anthropogenic or non-man-made. Non-anthropogenic fluxes include natural disturbances such as wildfires, windstorms, hurricanes, and landslides. In addition, special accounting in the sector has arisen due to the need to account for earlier land use management decisions, including patterns of forest replanting and harvesting that continue to influence emissions and removals during the gold period. These must be taken into account or they can significantly distort the mitigation needed to offset them and meet goals. The treatment of anthropogenic versus non-anthropogenic fluxes has important implications for how users account for land sector emissions and removals. For those who have minimal disturbance or land use legacy effects, when compared to total emissions, the use of special accounting rules may be unnecessary. In these cases, they may opt to account for the land sector as they would other sectors, keeping their accounting methods much simpler. However, for users who experience frequent non-anthropogenic disturbance events or have legacy effects causing significant fluctuations in GHG inventories, the inventory-based accounting methods may be inappropriate. In these situations, the inventory-based accounting methods may reflect changes in both emissions and removals from natural disturbances in addition to mitigation effects, rather than from mitigation effects alone. Likewise, users who have undertaken large-scale land use management projects in the past, such as wetlands drainage or afforestation, might find that the inventory-based approach primarily reflects continued impacts of past management practices rather than present mitigation efforts. In each of these situations, and ones like them, users may choose to apply special additional land sector accounting methods to better reflect the changes in land sector emissions and removals caused by mitigation efforts. Reporting on the land sector should include information on the criteria used to distinguish anthropogenic from non-anthropogenic fluxes, along with the justification for using them. Chapter 6 of the Mitigation Goal Standard also provides detailed accounting guidance and reporting requirements as outlined further in Module 7.